The world always has been a crazy place and may always be a crazy place. Of course, many of us hope and or pray that things change in the world and that things go for the better. But one thing that I can say having lived in a war zone under rocket fire is that it's made me think a little bit differently about the world and about what I would do in certain situations. Where would I want to be? Who would I want to have close by? And what are some of the most important factors that I personally believe would be important in a situation where you have access to nothing. I'm Rafael Di Furia. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter and roll that intro. It's very rare that I ever decide that I don't want to get into certain topics or not discuss them on Not Your Average Globetrotter because of what is currently going on in the world, but this is an idea that I've been sitting on for the past couple of weeks, and I'm not going to get into what's going on, what's happening, and where it's happening. Of course, those of you who've turned on the news anytime within the past few weeks will have an idea of what's going on. So to just jump into this idea, I personally think that if there's something happening in the world, my personal top priorities might be, and I'm not saying in this video that this is what I would do or this is what I think should be done or what I would advise to others, but these are opinions on what could be interesting things to look at. And you may want to transpose some of these ideas onto other places that maybe fit your situation better if this is something that you are actually thinking about realistically. And one of the first things that I would think about is weather. That may sound like a strange thing to think about first. You might think about resources or uh, political alliances or this or that or the other. But if everything goes to absolute mayhem and you don't have electricity, you barely have water or you, you at least don't have running water. One of the first things that I would want to make sure is that where I can be, I don't need a fan. I don't need electricity. I don't need heating that surviving as is just as the place can be found is doable. And when I'm talking about heating or air conditioning, I'm talking about like using off of electricity or gas for heating. Chopping wood is not necessarily my favorite thing in the world to do. Did as a kid, don't wanna have to do it as an adult. And don't worry, I'll get into some of the countries that I'm actually talking about that might fit some of these kind of parameters that I'm setting up here. How far can you get away from the rest of the world and places that maybe historically have had tensions, we'll put it that way, but also at the same time getting far enough away but still having access to humanity, to civilization, and to be connected. And so there are certain parts of the world where you can get far away from everything, but maybe you're going to be in a part of the world that relies on a lot of import and export. So that starts cutting out some areas. So then there are things that are maybe more ideal, like fresh water that you have available to you, natural resources such as fruits and vegetables that can be grown easily, and then the current situation in the country as well. How are things on an economic level? How are things on a social level? How are things politically? So that could also counterbalance some of these things. Of course, I think in some aspects, there of course can be different levels to this and what might be acceptable for one person might not be acceptable for another. So when we're talking about some of these places, like where could potentially be some of the best places in the world to live. I think also you have to think about the society and what it offers and what the people are like there and how warm and friendly and welcoming they can be. Because that even in the best of times, and of course we're talking about hypotheticals here. We're not talking about, oh, this is happening or this is not happening. We're talking about, hey, like, what would happen in X, Y, and Z situation? What would be interesting to look at? Again, we'll be getting into the countries that I'd be putting on this list kind of fitting these parameters or at least getting close in a second. But for me personally, one of the countries that I might put on the list of countries that might traditionally be thought of as, oh, that could be a really interesting place if the world went crazy, but maybe not necessarily everything that I'm looking for, the first country on that list might actually be Switzerland to some people that may sound a bit odd. And for some people thinking about things maybe a little bit more in a kind of traditional sense, they might be thinking, wait, but Switzerland, it's, it has so much to offer and it has so many wonderful things. And they actually are, in fact, prepared for various situations and scenarios. And without going into too many details, precautions that take things into account, such as bridges, uh, tunnels, roads, and uh, the ability to close those off sometimes even permanently, or at least quasi-permanently, or at least for a longer period of time. But one of the reasons why it might not necessarily make it onto the list, but still places that could be interesting to consider would be 
partially because of how expensive the cost of living can be there. And for example, I remember being there 16, 17 years ago, walking into a McDonald's for a burger, a salad, and a water. It was something like 22 francs. I forget what exactly, but it was, it could have been as high as 27 or 28 francs. At the time, one franc was about a dollar. So to me, that seemed a bit absurd when we we're talking about a place that in many countries in the world tends to be on the lower cost side of things. And generally speaking, the cost of living there isn't the lowest and it's not the lowest in Europe. It is, however, a very beautiful country and it has a lot to offer. So there is part of me that would not necessarily put it on the first tier list, but would still have it as a consideration. But one of the things also to move there is that you do have to have uh, the ability to support yourself there. Getting a visa might not necessarily be the easiest for some people. And even if you are coming from outside of the European Union, and if things haven't changed since I last looked, the kind of barrier minimum to entry for the things that you actually have to show what you have available to you would be higher than somebody from a European country. So even though it would be easier for someone from the European Union to get in, it's still there are some barriers in place there. And of course, when we're talking about visas and places to go, that's going to exist anywhere in the world. This is not going to be unique to Switzerland. But also there are other factors we're talking about on a social level. I mean, living in an apartment building, which is very common in Europe, uh, not being able to have your TV on after a certain time of night, not being able to flush a toilet or take a shower after a certain time of night. Uh, that to me sounds a bit uh, intense. And I can definitely understand having rules in place for sound. But I know there are a lot of factors in life that in other parts of the world that you don't necessarily have to take into consideration to as far of an extent as you might have to in Switzerland. But it is one of those kind of general basic social contracts that you have with kind of without saying. I mean, of course, there are laws in place for these things and so on. But it does seem to be one of those things that does work for the country and the people that live there. And I'm not somebody who makes like lots of noise at night. I just think that maybe being able to flush a toilet in the middle of night is not necessarily the worst thing to be able to have the option to do. But moving on, my top choices actually might not necessarily be in Europe. They would be in another part of the world, maybe two other parts of the world. But Let's just talk a little bit more about Europe for a second. I know some people may think about, say, Sweden or Norway, but again, when talking about like how cold it can get in the winter, this doesn't necessarily fit into what I personally would be looking for. However, spring, summertime can be beautiful in that part of the world. So maybe there's a give and take there that could be possible to work with. But again, I'm not looking to chop wood at this point in my life. Then we could talk about places like Greenland and Iceland. And... Maybe Iceland could be an interesting option or Greenland. I mean, talking about, say, for example, uh, thermal heating and thermal resources that they have, then that's interesting for the winter time. And they are maybe a little bit more isolated than some other parts of the world. But again, the coldness factor isn't something that I personally would be looking for. But because we're talking about weather, so OK, let's talk about a different part of Europe. So let's start with Italy. For me personally, I think there are some really interesting things. And again, I'm an Italian citizen, so I do have the ability to stay there without having concern from a legal standpoint. I mean, OK, even with other European countries, again, there's that level of being able to live there and other various factors. But having the ability to be in, quote unquote, your own country presents a different level of ease of being able to remain there. So there are parts of Italy that are very remote. And especially if you start looking at the southern parts of Italy, there are places that can stay pretty moderate throughout the year. So that could be interesting when you think about it as well. A lot of countries are very friendly with Italy. So that actually also presents an interesting aspect there. But a country that I would say also kind of is on a similar level of potentially interesting would be Portugal. Portugal specifically because it, when we're talking about Europe and continental Europe, it's a bit further out of the way. You have a lot of farmland here. You have a huge amount of coastline. Fishing has always been a part of the, the culture here and the society, and people have always done that. So those kind of factors to have 
access to food and water and having these things available to you, I think, again, very interesting and very important. And if I'm not mistaken as well, there's a lot of solar power uh, that's that's used in the country. And I think more and more is trying to be pushed out. I mean, of course, across Europe as well. But I do think there's something specifically interesting about Portugal as well with how out of the way it is. And again, like Italy, Portugal has a lot of friendly relationships around the world. So another interesting location that I think could be worth taking into consideration. I do happen to live here, so I'm trying not to approach this in a biased manner. And But of course, I do live here and I do really like it here, so feel free to take that with a grain of salt. If we're talking about places that are really out of the way, let's talk about New Zealand for a second. Again, there's something very interesting there, but like some other parts of the world, visas and requirements for those visas can be a bit strict and a bit stringent and a bit tricky. So that's one of the reasons why it might not necessarily make it to my top list so easily. But then also we have to talk about connectivity to the rest of the world. And it's almost quite literally the last place that internet goes. If I'm not mistaken, the lines that go around the world, it's like that is the last point that they hit after going through Asia to Australia stops in New Zealand. It is a country that could be somewhat self-sustaining, but there also have been in the past years reports of locals being unhappy with how many individuals have started purchasing homes there and buying homes there and creating their kind of fallout shelter in New Zealand. Uh, this, their communities, I mean, these are things you can look up online. There, there are documentaries about these uh, communities of people from other countries that are buying homes there and setting them up for a catastrophe, basically. Part of the world that I would say for me personally that I might look at as kind of the top choice would be South America. That may sound a little strange, but for me personally, again, talking about some of the factors that we've discussed so far, talking about out of the way from the rest of the world, countries that are friendly with many others around them and around the world that they have decent relationships at least with, and also countries that can be self-sustaining. At the top of that list, there's one country I have in mind in particular, but of course you can look at countries like say Argentina, Uruguay, or even Paraguay. Paraguay I think has some very interesting factors when it comes to residency and even I believe Chile has some interesting offers as well for those who are thinking about living there. But one country that I might put actually at the top of the list might be Brazil. And for some, based on what I've said so far, talking about current situations there and what things look like, Brazil might not necessarily fit what you what I was mentioning earlier in certain aspects. But even with that said, I think it's a very interesting choice because it is a country where theoretically they could block themselves off, create a wall around the whole nation, block all air transport in and out of the country, but still theoretically be completely self-sustainable having gas, oil, but even having biodiesel, ethanol. I mean, that was something that when I visited, I was quite surprised about. Like America at the time was talking, wow, well, maybe we need to start talking about using more green choices and this and that. And like it was a thing in Brazil already that uh, the, the cars, a lot of cars are already set up for um, using like, a, I think it was based on sugar cane or something. I forget exactly what. Also, when we're talking about kind of moderate climates. There are places where you can go in Brazil where, yes, it will definitely get very, very, very hot. And there are parts of Brazil where you can see snow and you definitely do find problems in the country. There's no doubt that there are issues that are being faced by Brazilians on a day-to-day -day basis. However, I do think that there are very interesting factors to be considered, such as the ones that I mentioned previously. And even though there is a draft in the country that does exist, so that is something to consider. But I mean, even amongst my friends who have done service there, they said they were twiddling their thumbs a lot because, I mean, realistically, what enemies does Brazil have? I know of actually a number of situations where I've had individuals tell me or even friends say that they were actually sent home from their service early because either there was not much for them to do or they could go home at the end of the day or they were sent home and allowed out of the service early for various reasons, but um, none of which were necessarily negative, but they just were like, okay, you've, you've done enough. You can go home now. There are legitimate alternatives that are available within Brazil from what I understand as well, but that's a different situation. But I think when we're talking about countries that have the ability to be somewhat peaceful, 
okay, granted, like I said, there are problems. It's not a perfect place. And there are considerations that you do have to think about when you are talking about Brazil. And yes, I may be half Brazilian. And this actually, I would say, is not a, a, a situation where I have any ability to really be biased in the situation, even though I have family there. Thinking about things realistically, I mean, I've never lived there. I've, I've only spent a short amount of time there total. But I do think realistically, there are beautiful, wonderful places where it would be possible, even if you have no electricity, no gas, zero imports, zero anything, if you were cut off from basically the rest of the world, there is an ability that regardless of the situation that life would have the ability to keep going on, of course, with challenges. And of course, we're not talking about peaches and rainbows and butterflies and unicorns here. We're talking about a situation where what if the world went absolutely mad? Well, it's already crazy. So more crazy, more mad than what it is now. Of course, these are not end all be all thoughts. And I'm not saying I have all the right answers or the only correct answers, because there's not just one right answer or one wrong answer in any situation or most situations, at least except for math, because depending on your personal circumstances, you may have certain things that you might need in your life that would lead you down a different direction than what I might think about. But anyway, thank you all so much for joining me for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. Thank you to those of you who helped to make this project keep on going on a monthly basis through Patreon or through the one-time support through options like the thanks button here on YouTube as well as rafaeldifuria.com slash support. I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there. And yes, I really do mean stay safe. I'll see you all next time. Later.